All right, so now we're going to talk about how you can build your project for Android. The process to build for Mac OS or OS X is slightly different, um, but we're going to cover Android today. So first you're going to need a new copy of Android Studio. So if you go to developer.android.com slash studio, and go ahead and download the latest version. For me, that version is 3.1.3. Say that you agree, and then it'll download. In this case, it's close to a gigabyte, so it's going to take a little bit. And I will meet you back here once it's finished. Okay, so my Android Studio is finished downloading, and I ran the .dmg that came with it. I'm on Mac, so on Windows it's slightly different. You'll get a, a .exe file, I think, and you'll run it, and there'll be some pretty quick uh, file prompts. So I'm going to drag my Android Studio to my applications. Uh, and then it's going to copy over there. All right, so now that that's installed, uh, I'm going to open up Android Studio. And there's a few things I need to do here really quickly. All right, so there's some little welcome wizards here that we're just going to go through here really quickly. Uh, I'm going to choose custom. I like a dark environment. Um, and then you want to make sure that the Android SDK is actually being downloaded, which is exactly what I want. Um, the other option you can have is to add an Android virtual device. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to hit next. And leave the RAM allocation alone. And then I'm going to click finish. And now it's going to need to download a little bit of extra stuff. Okay, so I've got all that downloaded. And now I'm taking a look at my Android Studio start. I don't have to start a project or open anything existing or profile a debug in APK. Instead, I want to go to Configure, and I want to go to SDK Manager. In here, I want to make sure that I have the SDK downloaded for Android 4.1 Jelly Bean, which is currently the most um, common version of Android that is available. The other thing I want to do is take very close um, attention to what my Android SDK location is. In fact, I'm just going to copy this really quickly here, um, and I'm going to put it into a Google Doc. OK, so I've got my Android SDK location uh, squared away in a Google Doc. I have uh, Android 4.1 selected. I also want to download just a couple other APKs that I know that my particular devices run on. Uh, I have one that's running on Oreo and another one that's running on NuGet. And I'm going to apply this and install those following components. I'm going to accept the license for that. And now it's going to download them. So more downloading. Yay! OK, so now that that's installed, uh, I'm just going to click OK and exit out of the SDK, and I don't need to use Android Studio again, unless you want to. It's a great program. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to go into Unity here. I'm going to go to File. I'm going to choose Build Settings. And then I'm going to make sure that Android is selected as what we're building for. Uh, if it's not, make sure that you switch to Android and choose Switch Platforms. And it'll take a little while while it changes the assets over. Um, all right, cool. And mine's already set up for that. Now the next thing I'm going to do is going to go into Preferences. For me, it's under Unity and then Preferences. On Windows, I believe it's under Edit and then Preferences. Uh, I'm going to go to External Tools. And down here under Android, I have to tell it where to find the SDK. Now, since I have already copied that onto a Google Doc, I'm just going to copy it back. And I'm going to paste it in here. And click Browse. And click yes, and there we go. Now, we'll have to do the same thing for the JDK, the Java Development Kit. Now, to find the Java Development Kit, to find the Java Development Kit, you could just Google Java Development Kit, and it'll take you to this website. Um, we're going to download it for Mac OS X, X64. Um, we're going to choose the current version, which is JDK 8U171. It's going to download as a... Uh, PKG. I want to make sure that I accept the license agreement there. And there we go. So this is going to download now. Okay, so my Java download has finished, and if I open the DMG, it brings me to a .pkg file. Um, this is on Mac, of course. On Windows, is going to be slightly different. I'm going to click Continue. Um, 
Ooh, I want to go back. I want to do my destination select. That's weird. Okay, we'll continue. Uh, we'll do installation type. I'll type in my password. Don't tell anybody. Um, and this is going to write files here. And I'll probably speed this up. Okay, so my JDK has been downloaded successfully, so I'm going to move the PKG to the file, or to the trash. I'm going to go back to Unity. I'm going to choose Browse to find my um, to find my JDK. And this automatically almost detects it. Um, it's going to choose that right there. And all right, cool. So we should be ready to actually build this. So now if you go to your build settings, uh, choose build. I want to make sure that my splash is first. Um, actually, before we can do that, there's a few more things we need to change. So we need to go to edit, project settings, and we need to go to player. Uh, make sure Android is selected. At this point, you can choose your default icon and default cursor. I'm going to leave these blank, which means it's going to give me the Unity logo. Um, I'm going to say my company name, Mr. Cat Tap Creates, and then product name, Match 3 Clone. Uh, in order to do this, I need to go into, it's not publishing settings. Is it other settings? I thought it was publishing settings. Um, it's not icon because this is just for the different versions of icon that you can do. Um, you can choose if you, you have to have splash image if you're using Unity Personal. You can choose what kind of splash image you want. You can even add your own logo here uh, and then decide how long it takes in between those logos. Um, other settings. Oh no, it was here. It was other settings. So I want to go to identification, package name. This is in reverse DNS order. So uh, com comes first. It's com dot and then I have Mr. Taft creates dot match three. I have my version as 1.0 and my bundle version code is one. Um, uh, my minimum API level is Android 4.1 because that's what I uh, downloaded for Android Studio. My target API level is automatic. So I should be able to go to my build settings, make sure that my splash page is first. So that comes up first and click build. I'm going to create a new folder inside of my match three clone project here. Um, and this is just going to be a folder specifically for my builds. And I'm just going to call this one build one and click save and it'll start building. The first time you build uh, a project, it takes a significant amount of time. The every time after that, it takes almost no time at all. Uh, okay. So now uh, we're going to need to make a couple changes really, really fast. So first of all, before we're going to have to rebuild this again, um, let's go to edit, project settings, and then player. And then we need to make sure that write permissions, which is underneath other settings. So write permissions needs to be external. Uh, persistent data path goes to the SD card by default. And if you don't have it written here, then persistent data path won't work. So that's the first thing we need to do. The next thing we need to do is we need to take a look at our game data script, which I already have open because I made this change myself and didn't delete it. But so when we're loading our data um, here, when we're doing our public void load, um, I check to see if the file exists, and if the file exists, then we load from it. But I didn't actually think about what to do if the file didn't exist, which it doesn't the first time you load it. So if file exists, then we, we load it. If the file doesn't exist, then I'm going to say that save data is equal to a new save data. So I'm essentially initializing that. And then I'm going to set the size. And this 100 is here because that's how many levels I was thinking I just picked a round number. So save data dot is active equals new bool, and there's a hundred of them. Save data dot stars equals new int, a hundred of those. Save data dot high scores new int, a hundred of those. And then save data dot is active zero. So I'm making the very first level 
active so that it's always that first level even if this save data file didn't exist that first level is always going to be active um, okay so those are the changes I made so if I go back into unity here I'm gonna rebuild the project so I'm gonna go to file build settings make sure Android is still selected I'm gonna choose build I'm gonna change this name of this file I'm gonna call this match three, build two. And it'll build that. And once that's done, I'll be right back here with you. All right, so like I said, if you're using Windows, you should be able to access the Android device just through the Windows File Explorer. But if you're using Mac, you need uh, Android File Transfer. So I have that open here. Um, I'm just gonna pull my match three, build two onto my phone's memory here, and then we'll switch to the document camera. All right, so here we are. Um, this is a really inexpensive Android phone that I purchased two years ago now on clearance at Walmart for $30 at the time. So this is the lowest spec device I could possibly think of that we could try. I've tried this on my personal phone, which is newer, but not necessarily brand new and it, it works fine. So let's try it on here. Now, in order to do this, you have to have access to your device's file structure. So if you don't have a file manager program, um, you might need to download one, like uh, Astro File Manager, I think is one. Let's get the focus better here. Yeah, it's about as, bad as, it, as good as it's gonna get on this screen. Um, so I'm gonna go to match three, build two. Now, if you don't already have your set, yourself set up to be uh, to be able to install the uh, apps from unknown sources, uh, when you try to install this, it's going to ask you, or at least tell you, that your um, your settings need to be changed, and you can just change that directly where uh, it tells you to. It should be in your settings tab under apps, and then allow apps from unknown sources. Uh, it's just a way that Android is trying to protect you. It's still allowing you to sideload apps so that you can put on apps that are from other sources. Um, so it's going to install here. And let's open this up. Got our Unity logo. Then there's our level select screen. So it didn't detect a file. So it created a new save data and made level one active. So I'm going to go to level one, hit play. And here comes my goals panel, say okay. And then here are my pieces. So uh, my fingers are too big for the screen. There we go. I'm trying to watch my monitor while I play on the game and that's not great. So here we go. Um, yeah, so for the most part, our project is working pretty well. There's a few things I want to do to make this work a little bit better. And there's been a few weird little glitches on here that I need to look into to figure out exactly what's going on. But there we go. Our project is optimized for Android. Um, I'm not noticing any slowdown. Like it, it seems to be working just fine on this device. Edge of the screen. I think that's probably this phone that's having the problem with the edge of the screen. Um, but our project is is working. Um, if I now level two should be open, which it is. And level two, I think, is the one that I made unwinnable because I wanted to have a level I could play for a really long time. Um, so yeah, there we go. Uh, next, what are we doing next? Um, I think we're gonna take a look at making a better bomb making method because there's some issues with that. Sometimes it'll make a row bomb when it should make a uh, adjacent bomb. And sometimes when a row bomb or a column bomb becomes another kind of bomb, everything freaks out. So we're gonna take a look at that and then uh, we'll start kinda of going forward from there. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them down below. Um, you can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. You can um, <laughs> you can join the Discord where I'm chatting pretty much every day. And yeah, have yourselves a wonderful day.